All right, today we're here with Iman. He saying, bro, you all good? What's happening, my brother? You good, yeah? Yeah, all blessed, man, all blessed. Um, yeah, what, what do you do for a living? What, what are you up to nowadays? I'm in my bay at the moment. Uh, me and my pal working on a little mocktail, cocktail bar. Uh, nice. I've got a gym in Bangladesh, that's where I'm from, just designed especially for like the poor people, the boxing thing, keep them off the streets and that. Nice, nice. Yes. Is, that, is that what's kind of needed? They, they need somewhere to work out? and For me... In Bangladesh, where I'm from, obviously, my life here as well, there's a lot of when kids, when a young age, yeah. they're targeted easily by gangs and stuff. Right. Um, in Bangladesh, it's a, lot, it's, a, it's a lot worse. Is it? Like, yeah, see people begging in the streets and that. It's like a business. They'll cut off the kids' arms and that, make them beg and that. So what I'm trying to do is obviously get them off the streets, get all the kids on a little gym, boxing gym, and just, just literally get their minds as much as I can do. So yes, that's that's what I'm doing occupied at the moment with that. Damn, I didn't know that at all. Where they cut they cut off a kid's arm. What so so the so kid gets th- sympathy. So yeah, so yeah. if you go if you go bang in Bangladesh, India, I mean I'm from Bangladesh myself. Yeah. You see like kids like I don't know, fingers missing, arms missing, one leg's going. Yeah. And obviously when I first went, I think I've been Bangladesh. I went last year, I went four years ago. Um prior to that I went probably when I was really, really young. And obviously yeah. you get you wanna know your culture and stuff. I'm thinking why is these people got legs missing, arms missing, and obviously fingers missing and that? Yeah. Obviously, my uncle, he was literally, he was about that life in Bangladesh. All right, um, all right, right. He had to get, well, he went, went away to Canada because <laughs> he, he, Bangladesh wouldn't allow him anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Then eventually they dropped his case. So then I can ask him these questions. Yeah, yeah, so then yeah. only I found out recently, he told me this, what the gangs and they do. So then they can beg, they beg for money. Um, and then that's how they make their living. So it's just, you know, it's heartbreaking. You've got seven year old, eight year olds, and I've got kids myself, and I don't, it's horrible shit. Yeah, I never knew they, they done it on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Jeez. Well, wow. you've got to realize, you've got to ask yourself, why so many kids with like no fingers and no arms and stuff? So it's a money making thing. 100%. So it's a yeah, yeah, it's yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. Because I, um, I heard about them doing it in England for kind of different cultures I won't say what culture yeah yeah and then they, they got them begging and then there's people yeah. running them kind yeah of, oh yeah. yeah no oh, yeah I know I've done, yeah. yeah I know exactly what you're talking about yeah. yeah no like in Bangladesh yeah they do it purposely like think some of the kids because it's a it's a poor country well yeah. it's, it's a developing country but there's a lot of poor people out there so kids will do whatever sometimes the kids they will f- themselves like literally Damn. let them cut them off because they want to make money Wow. So it, it's a nasty sort it's of sad, thing. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was, to be fair, that's one of my, obviously, we'll get into it in a bit. I thought I'd create something up there, do yeah. something good, because I feel like you do something good, you get it back, you get good karma back in your life. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, so you've got a gym out there to help to help young kids kind of get into something positive. Positive, yeah. Keep them off the mm-hmm. streets, keep them away from the gangs. Yeah, all that. Nice. And you said Marbella? Yeah, I'm currently like living in Marbella. Yeah, I'm yeah. back and forth from Marbella. Obviously, I've got my kids here, my family here. Um, we're just looking for another, just trying, me and my friend looking up a cocktail, mocktail bar. Just another yes. option. For me, in Spain, like, I grew up here, obviously, I went through tough times and that. Um, obviously, I didn't really have the option to go to Bangladesh. Yeah. Um, it was quite far away and that. But I never had no, bit, yeah. yeah, I never yeah. had a place where I can just, just go and just lay my head down and that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So for yeah. me, if I get something going on there, if my kids ever go through what I did, they can just go away, recharge, recuperate, re, do you know what I'm trying to say? That's nice, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think it's good to clear your head sometimes when you, when you have yeah. that opportunity, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, so if you don't have that option, like for me growing up, I didn't really have that much option. And I come from a strict mm. Muslim family. So like their answer is pray, it'll be all fine. Right, right. It'll be right. all fine. <laughs> which is, I'll get into all of that in a minute, which is all good and that, but sometimes in life, you just need to get away, get away from everything, restart and just go at it. Right, so where, where did you grow up? I grew up in South London. Were you born in South London? Or? I was born in Bangladesh. Right, right. So what age did you kind of come over in? When I was about one, two years old. Oh, so you were a baby, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. a baby. So, yeah, no one, no one, no one believes me. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, no, I was actually born in Bangladesh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and no, I grew up in South London. Whereabouts? Lived, um, near Croydon, Mitcham. Oh, okay, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Um, I've been in Essex, lived in Chelmsford for years. Nice. So, yeah, so I, I don't like to stay in the same place. You like to explore the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, London's a lot bigger than we know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, it's just, it's, you know what, like, the best place I lived was in Essex, Chelmsford. It was... Where? It was just so much nicer. Everyone's, you get up in the morning, you go to your supermarket, everyone says hello. Everyone, <laughs> no one's moody, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you get up, you go to your local park, whatever, the kids, everyone's all friendly. Like, Chelmsford's every, nice, though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone's just nice. Um, like, you know, South London, it's just, you know what I'm saying, it's just, everyone's always moody. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you say hello sometimes, it's just all moody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, definitely. yeah. All right, so what, what was your kind of upbringing like? 
you know what? Yeah. I had a wicked upbringing. Nice. I had a wicked upbringing. My parents were together. It was all very family orientated. Um, although a lot of my, I went left way is because my parents were very strict. Mm. Um, and I didn't believe in certain ways. Um, obviously, they, obviously, my parents are Muslim. Um, they bought a lot of Islamic. I mean, even though there's a difference between culture and religion for me. Mm -hmm. For them, it was more culture, but they were trying to mix the culture. They, they tried to justify themselves with the culture for the religion. For right. certain things, religion wouldn't say. They'd say culture. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. But most yeah. religion is the most important. So I went, obviously, oh, the more stuff I got forced into. I mean, for example, I've always wanted to do football, whatever. I think if my parents allowed me to go football every Saturday, they used to be like, no, this area is a rough area. These people are rough. You're going to experience racism. Right. I couldn't go to that. Instead, on a Saturday, I was obviously reading the Quran, which is not a bad thing, it helped me, but it's not like if they, if they managed, parented me correct way, done me both, it would have worked out. I wouldn't have gone the route I did. Do you know what I'm trying to you say? You think it was a bit too strict? It was very strict. So you got to understand that I've got two or three children myself. Yeah. So I make sure I discipline them as well, discipline as much as I can. They have to, for example, obviously they've got to do their school homework if they want to do something fun. Yeah. They've got to do this. they got to do certain things before I do the fun. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I would never rule anything out. Like for me, if my children wanted to, if my son, I've got a son, if he wants to go to football, I don't know, in the, in the ghettoest area of all, I wouldn't care. I'll go through that son. I'll go through that area with my son. I'll mm. give zero fucks. Do you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like with me, um, see, I get on with everyone. I'm very, very humble. I respect everyone. You got love for me. I got love for you. You respect me. I respect you. Yeah. If you, if you, if you want to bring me shit, then yeah. it's a whole different story. Do you know what I'm saying? I get so, what you mean. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And then, do you know what? Again, growing up for me, um, it was kind of, yeah, it was basically a lot of it. My, my path I took is down to family as well. But I had that side of family, like where I had both parents, food was on the table, roof was ahead. So, yeah. Do you, do you think that sometimes parents, um, because of their religion and, and the, tr tr well, the tradition that they were, they were brought up in, you think it doesn't kind of fit in the, in the London lifestyle that the kids have to bring up in? Yeah, like so. Raised in? Yeah, a lot of the time, I think. For example, a lot of things they used to say, you can't do this and that, yeah. which I didn't think was abnormal. Then I think, well, why didn't you bring me up in Bangladesh? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Why are you going to come here, do this? Like you're in a different man's country. It's all, it's all about adapting. It's about, you got, it's 50-50. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Obviously people respect you, your, your culture, religion, you got to respect theirs as well. So, yeah. What, what was it kind of like um, growing up in, in terms of that like, race? <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Racism is probably one of the key facts that yeah. I went, I went the path I did. Right. So in school, I didn't, there was no racism. Like, yeah. There was nothing. I got on with everyone, ever got with me. We was all cool. It's when I left school. Um, I think, do you remember? I think one day I, do you know, it was before the first time I experienced racism, actually. I'll tell you what, we'll go back to that. It's probably 12 years old, 11 years old. I remember wow. this back of the back of my head. Yeah. So I was walking with my mum, my little brother. He was probably, I think he's five years younger than me. He was young as well. And these group of guys in a little Ford Escort. I know this, but I know this. This is how clear my mind is. So mm. it was in a blue Escort. Like, you fucking packies, go back to your fucking country. Wow. I never forgot that. This was before I even started high school, whatever. I never forgot that. Yeah. So then I, um, when I get to 16 years old, I left school and that. Um, the big thing when I left school was the whole graffiti scene. So we started getting into the old graffiti. I remember all the big like surf from Croydon. You had your Cosas, you had the Dives. I mean, they're all jumps on the part of my Cosa died. I think they passed away, rest in peace. Um, and then me and my pal um, occur, we used, to, we used to literally go out there, graph. Like we used to get about, you used to get a name for yourself. I realized you just have to be, you just want to follow the trend, don't you? Yeah, that was the thing, yeah. But yeah. then the more you get your name out, everyone wants that piece of you. Who's this? Who's that? Who's that? Oh, right, right. So, yeah, yeah. And with yeah. me, I get on with everyone. I have no issues with anyone. And then a lot of people wanted a piece of you. Um, so then I realised a lot of time I used to get, oh, who's this packy? Who's this this? Who's that that? And I focused, I had a lot of that in it. So you used to get a lot of, a lot of people used to ring me, like just a joke having a prank and that. So my life changed when I remember this guy, um, he rang me up, said something, something racism, blah, blah. And like, I was only a skinny guy then. I was only a skinny guy. I'm five foot still. I'm, I'm still short. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So he was about what? I think he's about a lot taller than me. Five, nine, six anyway. So my brain's like fucking, right. I'm going to go fucking whack him up. When that time, I remember, I remember this like back of my, back of my hand. Went to Sutton McDonald's. Walloped him. It was the <laughs> best thing ever. Yeah. Next minute, I was on the floor unconscious. <laughs> oh, right, right. That day. That yeah. day, from that day on, I realized I can't fight big, but I'm only five foot five. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. Logically, like, 
if you do things, do you know what I'm saying? Common sense. You ain't knocking a guy out the shorter thing. Do you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? So um, then I started, then I knew, I like, if someone's coming for me bigger, you got to go, you got to grab your tools and you got to go at them. Do you know what I'm trying to right, say? Right, right. So logically, you just thought, I need to protect myself. I yeah, need to this get is some. when I started the fucking steroids, the juice. I started hanging about some oh, big, serious? big, yeah. So, so then I, I thought, my life changed. From that moment on, when I woke yeah. up unconscious, I realised, fuck, man. So what, what, what made you go unconscious? Someone hit you from behind or something? The guy punched and knocked me out. Oh, right. He did <laughs> see coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, he was bigger than me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If you yeah, think yeah. about it, it's like Anthony Joshua fight, fight, fighting Floyd Mayweather. If Joshua gets a bank yeah. on Mayweather, but he's gone. I don't care how fast the Mayweather is. In one bank, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? So that day, that changed my life. I thought, nah, like, this ain't happening. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't happening. Like, and then... I thought, you know what, I need to see what's, I need to bulk myself up. And then obviously I was start getting, I met some, some of the big boys from the area. I started mingling with people because everyone knows I get on with everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. And that guy, the whole reason that kicked off, because he was racist. Yeah, right. But then eventually, a few days later, obviously he realised who I was around knocking around or if he rang up, he apologised. So that was that. But for me, that was a life lesson. Like you ain't messy, whatever, however big they are, however, whatever, you ain't winning against a guy who's massive and whatever, and you're only five foot five. Yeah, so I see you, you, mean. you have to do some harsh shit. So, um, so what do you have to do then? So you so, got into steroids? Yeah, so yeah, right, so then right, I started right. a juice course. I've been doing starts on several for 10, 15 years. Um, and I got wow. big wham, whatever. And then I started training, started doing my boxing training. I tried, you know what I'm saying? But even then, you can, then you realize, even then you can, I can handle people. If someone comes to me, my size similar, yeah, I can handle myself. I, I can rock you, innit? Yeah, you want it, I'll give it to you. Yeah. But if you're fighting someone who's a lot taller and a lot bigger than you, got 20 years MMA experience, it's no good. Yeah. So yeah. what I say to these people, even still, like even the last say 10, 15 years, like you get a lot of people um, want to prove. Like I don't get any issues anymore. Like I don't get any issues anymore. Last what ten years or so, I've not had any issues. No one gets issues. It's only when people want to see who you are. But for me, if if you're coming for me for no reason, like if you want to come ring me up, like I'll, I'll fight you. I ain't fighting. Yeah. You. I'm gonna fucking blow your fucking head off, or I'm gonna fucking gutter you. Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like. That's facts, because the way I see it, some people say, oh, like, why are you fighting with tools, pussy? I was like, you're the pussy targeting a fight for a fight guy. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Like, come to me. If you're same height as me, same, like, build, same whatever, it's a fair thing. But if you know you're ringing me up, you know you're big and back, like, stronger and you're going to take me out, like, that's, you're the fucking pussy. Do you know what I'm trying to say? When you get to that age, like, you don't want to do that madness. You don't want to fight, whatever. Like, with me, if someone, even if I was, I don't know, if that person's wrong, I'd apologise to them. I'd shake their hand. i said, I'm sorry, I walk away. But even if you want it with me, I think you're trying to bully me. And that's when I know I'm coming with you. Every fucking tool I got, everything, it's, it's game over. Right, and that's, right. that's the mentality I have. And to be fair, I've not had no issues. Um, and even to this day, because like, I've got no problems with anyone. I get on with everyone. And that's, that's what's got me far in life. Like, even see growing up, um, when I tell you all these racist guys, um, and it's a lot of the racist guys were these white guys that, certain white guys that just wanted to be someone they couldn't. Right. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And then they see yeah. me, like, in my 20s, like, a lot of people wore out, I don't know, clubbing and, um, I don't know, posing with fucking vodka in a club. Like, I was in fucking, I was in Mayfair, West London, Knightsbridge, like, partying with the firm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Right, like, the late either. Dave Courtney, all of them, I was out there. And when people start seeing all of that, they were fuck with. It goes actually, I don't want to say get into too much details, names and that. Then they start saying, like, all right, that's, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then before, see, so if they think of doing anything to me, like they think, oh, the next day, if we do something to him, the next day, our lives are gone unless we kill him and no one knows about it. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that's pretty much my upbringing and stuff. No, fair enough. It's, yeah, affiliations and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it. It's just, you know what, for me, it's all about, I didn't waste my time in my 20s. As soon as I knew that time when I got unconscious and got up, I knew I had to start doing something, be someone. I got a little brother, I got a little sister. Um, I'll tell you a funny story about my mum mm. um, in a minute. But I thought, I got to protect them. Like, I can't have, I can't have that. Because if I went through some of the shit, like some of the shit people kind of ringing me up on that, it's, you know what I'm saying? I don't want any of that coming to my parents. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that. So do you think, you think times have changed to do racism? Yeah. It's got better? I would say... Yeah, a lot better than, I, I know it's a lot better than um, what I was growing up in, yeah, 100%, million percent. Yeah, yeah. So you said that, um, obviously you picked up your tools, you kind of you changed your life to that way. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the kind of stuff that, what's the kind of maddest thing that's ever happened to you? Maddest thing? Um, so I'll tell you a couple, of, <laughs> a couple of occasions. So there's one time my brother rang me up. Again, this was going through the period, I was just doing what I was doing. My brother rang me up saying, 
the scaffolder guys pulled up poles and that to him outside um, right. outside one of his pals one of his pals restaurants so anyway something like that so to me thinking all right this obviously these big scaffolders probably think these asians are little nothing probably packies or something do you know what i'm saying so i've grabbed my white van grabbed my piece and i've gone i've gone to this road in um Banstead, Tadworth, yeah. So I'm going over these fucking scouts. I'm firing away. Like, and this is just a normal road. I'm, I'm, I'm reckless then, yeah. I'm firing away. And my brother's like, that's the door. So I rung at the door. I said, who the fuck is trying to think my brother? And his bird come out saying, Iman, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, fuck, what is that? I'm gone. <laughs> Next day, luckily for me, that would have been a big, big major case. She yeah, yeah. There, and I said, well, you're a fucking scaffold offer and shouldn't be fucking run, my brother. But then people knew in the manner, they know I got things around me. Like, do you know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah, I'm five foot five small. And do you know what I'm saying? If you're big enough, you've got a good chance fucking me over. But like, I ain't going to have it. Like, I ain't going to just come meet you for like, fucking roll around on the floor, have a black eye and that. You have yeah. to meet me. One of us is going to die. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'd rather walk away, leave it, shake hands, make peace. But if you want to go down that, we're, we're coming for you, innit? Like, full stop. Um, there's been, like I said, there's been loads of stuff. There's been loads of another time. I think, um, I think this other guy, again, it comes down to racism. Um, oh, right, right. So the skis, I was with this bird. The skis said a couple of indirect comments. Um, and I ignored it, ignored it, ignored it. And them days you had, um, this is when I was young, you had, um, what's it called? MSN. Mm. Don't forget, this was like, this was now. This is my early, 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 early twenties. And he said something about. She, he said something to her about. Oh, what are you doing with that packy? Right. Like, oh. All right. It was, and I lied to him before. He said a few things before. I lied to him before. So um, I thought, all right, we're gonna have to show him what time. This was broad daylight. <laughs> this again, I was reckless. My head was all over the gaff. So I grabbed my brother, grabbed uh, one of my other pals. Um, I grabbed a thing. Went outside broad daylight outside of his house. Um, and then we, we obviously put a, allegedly, this is what's been said, yeah. we put a thing to his face, put him in the back, took him to the woods, that's bashed that. him up and he went home naked. That's what allegedly got Damn. obviously done. Um, but things like that, it went around. Do you know what I'm saying? It got thingy like, fuck, like they, these boys ain't fucking around. What was the reason for that? Racism as well. Racism. So yeah. firstly, this geezer about two times before said, sign like indirectly about packy this yeah, packy that yeah. yeah and the next time obviously i was at this bird's house um and she look what this guy's the guy said you know why are you with this packy right right so i was like raw so i've given him like a few chances do you know what yeah. i'm saying i thought do you know what is what again this is all allegedly what's happened and what's yeah, going on yeah, yeah. Do you know what i'm saying so what's been said was that you you've grabbed him what from the house he was he, one of his friends set him up yeah apparently yeah. Oh, one right, of his friends right. set him up yeah apparently he said i put a finger in his face and his pal put him in the back of the car took him to the woods, fucking gave Dashed him, him a good hiding. Yeah. And then he walked from the woods, I think, no, from Petrograd all the way to his house naked. Damn. So, but that's what allegedly got done. But to be fair, like I said, I'm an yeah. easygoing guy. I'm not a bully. I'm humble. But if you're going to be racist, and for me, I have to think about my children and my brother and family. If I yeah. don't clamp down, on the, clamp down on certain things, and again, I stress this was allegedly, if I didn't clamp yeah, yeah. down on these things, then it would have continued. He would have done it to someone else. It would have happened to my kids. It's generation after generation. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Anything I've done in my life, like what well, the stories I've told you, it is it's for a reason. There's not. I'm not one of those people that. Do you know what I'm saying? For no reason. Yeah. For no reason. To, yeah. Not no yeah. reason. I mean, some people have the opinion why you should do this, why you shouldn't do that. But if you don't, if you don't clamp down on things, it will just continue. Like, see, for example, for this guy, uh, the racing, he's done it twice before, and I said it in the nicest, politest way. Um, please don't, you don't want any problems, just mm. please. And he didn't listen until allegedly that madness happened. Then everything just stopped. Everything stopped. Right, and he heard from right. me since, ain't seen him since. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I can tell you another madness. Um, okay, like I said, every madness I've had was through like racism. So another guy, um, he said, I oh, can't, what did he do? He was messaging, but and said something about, again, said something racism about my family or something. Right. Anyway, so me and my bro Cannibal, like, <laughs> he's the stabbing king. Like, anyone... <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, well, he's known for it, then. He, yeah. he, he, oh, mate. He's, he's the stabbing king. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh. I've never been... Do you know what? I've never, like, do you know what I'm saying? Being one of those ones. I'll grab my finger and just... If I've got to do what I've got to do, I'll do what I've got to do. Mm. So the skis are rang. And then he's, he's giving it on the phone. I'm like, you ain't going to do nothing. Anyway, I grabbed Cannibal. We, we had some things even the butchers don't even have. Damn. Do you know what I'm saying? 12 o'clock. Found this, found, well, I thought we found this house. Anyway, we couldn't find it. Um, and then the next day, I think we got caught on CCTV. But they did nothing happen. The guy rang up and apologised. He's like, look, he sent the CCTV footage. 
of whatever. <laughs> like, Fuck, that was a lucky sort of thing. He apologised and that was the end of it. Do you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? But these are things, like I say, if, you, if we just knocked on his door, if we found the right door and knocked our sorry, mate, this, it would have carried on and on and on. He saw what we was on and like I said, he knew like cannibal ain't fucking around and I ain't fucking. When we're on this whole thing, we don't care if we die or not. It is mm. what it is, isn't it? Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? If you're going to come for me, the way I see it, it's a sacrifice I'm, make, I'm making. Like, so you ain't going to do it to my, my kids, my kids' kids. Because it's all about how you bring up your kids. If you bring up your kids in the correct way, the whole generation, it's going to continue and continue. Mm. If you don't, then, mate, it's literally, it's game over. That, that's why the world is so fucked. Do you, do you feel like it's, sometimes it's good that, you know, that your close chances weren't, you know, finished? What do you mean? As in, like, obviously, if you're going for someone... And, and you can't get him that day, for, for example. I was never, do you know what? I was yeah. never, everything happens for a reason. Like I said, I'm a, I feel like I'm a reborn Muslim now. Okay, right, right. I feel like I'm a, I follow my faith, I pray, I do that for, a lot of the things that happen is my mum's prayers, yeah, my mum's prayers and Allah. They, these are the reason why nothing's bad happened. Anything could have happened. Like, I could have gone to any of them things and they would have had, they could have been told up. They could have had fucking shooters and everything. But mm. everything's happened for a reason. Uh, but like I said, a lot of people, they've got it. A lot of people have got it. Do you know what I'm saying? I've f***ed a few people. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm coming. Like, they don't think, they think I'm going to come. Some of these big boys, they ring me up. Like, again, it's for no reason. Like, there's no yeah. justified reason. Like, sometimes, this was when I was young. Especially when that, once, I, once they start saying who I'm affiliated with and what I can do and what I've got around me, then it just dies down. A lot of this, I experienced in my early, early 20s. Still finding myself, still, still making a name, getting that reputation. Um, so, like I said, I never had any issues. You just have to do what you have to do. A lot of these guys, they knew, like, they come for me. I'm like, pull up my thing or whatever it is. Oh, why have you got that? Well, what do you think's going to happen, mate? Do you know what I'm saying? What the yeah. fuck? Like, you think I'm going to let you beat me up, lay on the floor? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> nah, fair enough. So, what, what would be a reason for, you know, allegedly, you know, the stories you're saying, someone getting poked up? Listen, like, if, you're, if you're doing anything to my family, okay, I'll yeah. tell you something. So, after I think. Um, there was a time, my mum my, my, my mom was in Tesco's, 8017. Right. Um, she said someone tried pulling up a scarf um, and spat at her. Oh, wow. So I called her a dirty terrorist. Wow. So yeah. lucky, I, I went to the CCTV, I sent the picture around. Um, and then luckily one of my pals said, oh, he's on that road. Wow. And then I don't want to say too much, allegedly, what happened was happened, game over. So for me, you fuck with my family, my kids, I don't care who the fuck you are. You're, you're getting it, you're dead, innit? One of us is gonna die, simple as that. But again, like I said, I'm not a guy that does shit for no reason. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. do nothing. And I wouldn't, like I said, a lot of people say, oh, why are you fighting your tools? And again, like I said, I repeat myself loads of times. For a five foot for guy, short, my build, like, you, you're gonna have to use, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to do something. Unless you come to me same height, which is, it's like a, it's like a roulette, isn't it? You never know what you're gonna get, so. That was that. So they're the reasons, like to my family, my kids, like, like any man or like any woman, any human being that protect the kids basically. That's the only reason I've ever done anything. You're never, I've never been one of those people um, that robs people. Um, I've never committed a robbery in my life. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> right. I've yeah. never been that sort of thing. Not that I've got anything against anyone, but it's just not me. Yeah. Like, my name's good. Like, you can leave, people can leave me a million pounds and it still be there, uncounted. Um, and that's why I have a lot of friends in a lot of places um, and I have a lot of connections and they're all good like we all good see when you see a lot of the things what people don't understand like see when I said going up racism a lot of these white guys they were they thought racism was good to make them bad and that do you know what I'm saying what, okay, mm. what they couldn't understand is how I was around the people how I was around and then big big people like there was there, there wasn't racist like this some of the people around they're yeah. the big big gangsters in the UK the big boy fucking thing I don't want to say no names again but yeah. they weren't about racism they were the nicest people do you know what I'm saying? The nicest people you can meet. Yeah. Um, and this is what this is what I realise. Some of these people, they want to be so they're just racist, they are just nobodies. Mm. Um, but that's the reflection on them. So yeah. No, fair enough, fair enough. Um what's, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen in life? You have to think of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been there. So again, allegedly. So I think this one of the one some guy owed one of my one of my pals. Some money. This is what he said anyway. Yeah. Um, obviously, apparently I was there and so so he owed his money, um, and then I think he done he he he, he tried robbing my pal's house anyway. So right. my pal caught up with him, went to his house and cut his hands off, his fingers. Sorry, his well, fingers, all, the, all the fingers, all four off, all Damn. four off. Chucked it in the garden, 
So because I think you've got to put it in ice for a certain certain amount of time for it yeah. to be for it to be fingered. Waited literally it wasn't it wasn't even no talking this and that. Chopped his fingers off. Damn. Waited about what half an hour. Watched TV and just went. So he couldn't. Oh, well, so you couldn't put them back. Put them put them back. No. Wow. So that's that. And that was his. That was his. That was his thing. And obviously it's the first time. I'm like raw. And again, this is what allegedly yeah, yeah, got yeah. done and this is what I what he's saying like I was there like rah nothing do you know what I'm trying to say yeah um, so yeah th- that's some of the crazy shit that I've, I, I, I've seen and to be fair a lot of this stuff it, it, it sticks to your head do you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah, I still imagine, suffer PTSD yeah. from it do you yeah. know what I'm saying some of the shit some of the shit I've seen um, it, it's mental it's mental damn how do, you, how do you cope with PTSD then do you know what I tell you this is the realest thing PTSD like, like I said to you in it, everything in life that I've experienced I've never been one guy to do things for any reason. I've never gone and shot people, stabbed people for no reason. Everyone that's got what they had coming, they had coming, whether it's for family reasons or whatever, protect my family, like any human be I do. So I, PTSD, I suffer from it every day, mm. but you will never get rid of it. You can only control it. You right. can only control it. My kids, my family, are that, keep, that keeps me going. Like literally keep me going. Um, right. And like I said, you can only control it. You'll never get rid of it. No, fair enough. I still get flashbacks. I mean, as, you can ima- as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff <laughs> I've seen, gone through. Um, but yeah. What's life like now? Do you know what? Alhamdulillah, yeah. life is good. Life is blessed. Um, I feel like I'm a reborn Muslim. Um, yeah, I've, yeah. I've got my family, um, my children. Um, like I said, I pray. My mum and dad are good. My brother's good. My sister's good. I created a life like which we're all good now. No, there ain't no, there ain't racism, all that's dead now. It's all finished. Now, if anything ever happened to someone, someone, I can easily eliminate all of that shit. It's not even a problem. I don't even have to be in the country. Mm. So I'm, like I said, I get on with everyone, every corner around England, I'm good. Like my name's good everywhere. Um, so if someone did, for example, if someone did sign to my family and I'm not even there, it can be handled from there to there. It is no dramas. I see, so, yeah. I see. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> don't mess with Ema. <laughs> no, it's not, you know what? It's not. It's, yeah. not, it, it's not even like that. No, no. But, but you seem. You seem like a nice guy. Yeah, but, no, I am. I'm but, a really, really. Uh, yeah. Like I said, this is me. Like yeah. what you get is me. I'm a really nice, humble guy. I'm not. I'm not one of those people that gang bangs that does this, that does that. Like I had to do what I had to do. Yeah. To get where I am today. Yeah. Like I just paved the way for my brother, so my brother can do that. So my mum, like that incident with my mum allegedly. Like, yeah. No one. No, everyone knows us. My mum. Everyone knows what my mum's house is, isn't it? Like, if you do something and I find out who you are, yeah. then that's, that's that, isn't it? Like, there ain't no two ways about it. Do you, do you ever feel bad about anything or do you feel like it's, it's justified? That's why. If that's I felt why. bad, like, a lot yeah. of people say, listen, a lot of people say to me, oh, you should have gone to the police. You shouldn't do this. Let the door. Mm. Fuck the police. They don't, they've never done anything for me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? They've never done anything for me. And what are police going to do? Like, literally, what are police going to do? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Not absolutely nothing. Someone does something, someone spits at your mum or does all that whatever bad stuff they do, they, they, go, they, they go in jail, got their PlayStation, chilling out, you got your phone there, do you know what I'm saying? You, you live in life, what, two years or so, or something? it's like a minor, in it? Do a year, get out. Like, that's not justification. Mm. You've got, you got, you got to feel that, you've got to feel that pain. You've done something wrong, you don't ever want to do it again. Like in Saudi Arabia, I went Umrah back in, um, when I was young. Mm. And they, they, at night, they leave everything open, because you, you, if you rob mm. anything from Saudi Arabia, your hand gets cut off. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's, there's low, low, there's low, low cr- crime rate. So that's where you've got you to come across the people, like you do something serious, serious. That's why I say to people, like, just leave me alone. I've got my family, whatever. I, like I said, I have no problems with no one. I've not had any problems like 10 years plus. Yeah. But if you're going to come to any, with me with any bad energy, then you've got to be one of us, like I said, one of us is going to die. Mm. So, yeah. Fair enough, bro. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Obviously, it's hard to hear that like that. that but I get, yeah. I get your reasons behind it. Of course. Yeah. yeah no. Of course. Like yeah. I said to you, it's never been for no reason. Um, like I said, I'm a humble guy, and like I said, I, you show love for me, I got love for you, and I'm one of those people. I'm loyal. I got you regardless. I got you regardless. And like, see with me with my friends and that. Like, if they do, I'd always correct my friends. If my friends tell me, right, we're gonna do this, I'm like, nah, you, you can't do that, and it. Like, you got to move correct in life. I've got this fine life and I've got so many friends in so many different places yeah. it's because I move correct. Do you know what I'm saying? You've got to move correct in life. You've got to do, you got to do well, never steal, never rob, never, t- do you know what I'm saying? Just be humble. That's all you've got to do. Mm. If someone does something about you, then yeah, we resolve. You do what we've got to do. And yeah. that, that's the way it should be. Yeah, no, I get you. Um, was, was crime ever for money as well? Yeah. yeah. So, again, like I said, you had to, you had to, be, you had to, from the graffiti game, 
you got to realize a lot of things of you got there's a lot of crime things you got to do you got to make your money um like we have like i said my parents weren't rich mm. but they gave me a roof over my head they gave me food on the table that was it but as any any young kid you want nice things you want nice cars do you know what i'm saying age mm. of 18 i was the first in the manner of a drop top so right, right. do you know what i'm saying i was doing what i, I had to do what i had to do but <laughs> like for me that day that was the I think, before, I think before that, a funny story, I didn't realise. So when I got, when I got obviously amongst it, I didn't realise who on my next door neighbour was CID. Damn, serious? <laughs> so me, first time I go into it, I'm moving like this, like penny sweets or yeah, just yeah. like, I'm, I'm caught like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Moving like Caprio Sons and stuff and that, innit? Yeah. Um, and I remember one day, fucking, um, I'm just doing what I'm doing, down the road, my mum rings me up, right, what have you done? Blah, blah, there's all dogs there and everything. So they went in there, they went in there, they didn't get in because they thought, like for me, this is what I tell you about my mum and dad, they will never give me in. They yeah. will absolutely never give me in, yeah? Right. So whatever, maybe, maybe that time would have been in the house, like I said, obviously I was stupid then, this was when I was, what, 17, 18. Do you know what I'm saying? The, the police come to go, let us in, we think this is that, we think this is that. My dad told them to fuck off. Like, have you got work? No, fuck off. <laughs> and they said, one day, we'll do whatever we do, 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 do. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm, like I said, nothing's, nothing's happened. They got lucky, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's in my mum's prayers and that. But like I said, this was a long, long time ago. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, you have to do what you have to do. Um, and then obviously from there, I just got into my work, businesses, and that's it. Obviously, a lot of people say, does crime pay? Yes or no? You, you, you've got sacrifice. Financially, yes. Mentally, no. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna lose a lot of your mental side. A lot of mental side, a lot of it comes down. You're going to deal with a lot of idiots, a lot of dickheads. And again, when you went with me, another thing I'll tell you, when, um, when things were, obviously, when we was getting busy and whatnot, because mm. uh, a lot of people buying new clothes, new this, no that. I was buying <laughs> left, right, center, I'm burying yeah. them all over. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, you, know, you, think, you know, you could be anyone, anyone can come for you. you it doesn't matter who you are, innit? Yeah, someone from a different manner can come with you, you're finished. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It doesn't matter how big or bad you are, everyone bleeds. So, so for me, yeah. so for me, that's, that's what I was building up. Like, everyone in my manor knows straight away. Like, if, they, if they've got a slight thought, let's do something to him. They know, right, but then he's got something right there or something's going to happen. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're kind of known for it as well? Did you say Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, if, right, if, right. If, if, if you're going to think of something, you're going to do someone's homework. Yeah, yeah, First yeah. thing you're going to ask, right, who he's connected to. So either way, that, that, that's actually just a game over, isn't it? Like, mm. when you find out, like, in terms of my, my circles and that, it's a thing. And you think, all right, forget, forget, that's one thing. But then you think, all right, what if... They wasn't around one day, everyone was on holiday or something. Yeah, and you got yeah, to think, yeah. fuck, he's got some serious, serious things around him. And to be fair, that's what, that's what made me who I am. Yeah. Even today, like, you've got to protect yourself fiercely. Because you never know what's coming. Like I said, people can come down with, like I said, people got loads of things. So for me, luckily, that's, that's what I invested my things in. Now, how many would you have at one time, just a maximum, allegedly? Yeah, it, it just depends. It's all different shapes and sizes. <laughs> it just depends, isn't it? Where you got to have you a pick sta- a mix, yeah? Uh, yeah, that's what I was, it's pick a mix, man. Like, yeah. I realize, like, you got to realise, I'm just a skinny five foot five guy. Mm. What's, what's going to matter about a big tonk hench guy from, I don't know, from the, from the ghetto? Nothing. You're just, a, you're, just a, you're just a body. But then at least I know I'm giving myself a half chance. So you're coming through that, like, do you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's, do you know what I'm saying? It's game over. Mm. Um, and then, like I said, I met, I met some serious brothers along the way. They had some other serious stuff. I don't want to say too much. Yeah. Again, it's going to get me, like, like I said, put it this way. I could, if I really wanted to, if I got the brothers together from everywhere, we could cause a scene like Gaza. Facts. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Facts. My, my guys are ready anytime, wherever. But do you know what? A lot of the time, we're, a lot of it's come down to brotherhood. We're, we're not about all of that life. Do you know what I'm saying? We go to the mosque, we're on our dean, we all got our children. Um, but if you come for our children, come for any of us like that for no reason, then it's a whole different story. So what, what kind of change? Is it just growing up or...? Um, so again, like, through the lifestyle. Yeah. I, like I said, I was born Muslim, a strict Muslim, but growing up in my younger, I, to be fair, I, I, I drank, mm-hmm. I did drugs, um, and I never got peace. I never got peace. Because with that lifestyle, you got to understand, if I like to go in Knightsbridge and that, with a party with a big buzz, it ruins your mindset. Right. And then you think, a lot of nowadays, half the population is on drinking drugs. Yeah. So for me, I realised, you know what, it, it ruined my life. Like, I was thinking, obviously I didn't get that, but for me, I was never that guy that sold his stuff, was always in there. I never owed anyone a penny. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, but I always wanted nice stuff, so I never let myself go. Like, a lot of people, that lifestyle, you have a guy in jail, you have a guy in dead, 
or you're going to turn into a nitty. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Luckily for me, alhamdulillah, I was none of them. But I had personal expectations. Yeah. Um, so I'd never let myself go for that. Um, so the change was, obviously, I would never get peace. I never had no peace, obviously. And then one day I thought, you know what? Like, I need to start changing my life, see what happens. My mum and dad used to go to the mosque, go thingy Friday. And then I had little things. I remember one day, I remember I didn't, at one time I didn't have a pot to piss in. Mm. My pal was doing a little raffle. Like, back on social media, so I'd predict some numbers and whatever. And me and the missus were just sitting in bed. I was like, oh, we have to pay our rent and stuff. I was like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do, innit? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Allah, if you are real, please give me, let me, give me the number, wanna? Anyway, I had like 300 left in my account, 300 quid. Yeah. 100 quid I paid to this guy. I won the raffle, yeah? Ah. And then I was like, nah, this could be luck. I said, Allah, please, just one more time. I won the raffle. But then I, I didn't even, I didn't go to prayers then. I was like, yeah, I was just still, I was arrogant. I was like, yeah, whatever. And I just carried on living. And then it was, it got to the point, I really wanted this Range Rover. Mm. I was like, ah, oh, nice, all my, my favourite car, I wanted it. I said, Allah, please, I will do everything. I got it. So I thought, you know what? Three times, I done what I done. I thought, let me go to the mosque. Let me see what it's about. Yeah. Um, and, I start, and then I started going there. I started going there a lot. And I could see little changes. I could see little changes in life. Um, then I had issues with my children's mother. Mm. Um, mothers and I got two kids' moms and that. Um, and then to be fair, all that children, not seeing your children, drove me mad. Absolutely yeah. drove me mad. Um, to be fair, there was one point I didn't want to be. I was, to be fair, but that's what, to be fair, that 2023, it changed my life. Um, like I said, I might, I might, might live in my bed now, come back forward for my children. Um, my main thing, again, like I said, I lost a lot of pals mm. during 2023, mm. a lot of pals. Um, not pals, my pals. Um, quite a few, quite a few people um, that are quite close to them. And it hit me, I thought, you know what? That's when I realised I can't be sitting here, like, do you know what I'm saying? Feeling like this. I've got to do out there for my kid. Like, I've got to do something for my kids. If something ever happens to me, what have my kids got? Nothing. So that day changed my life. I thought, you know what? If I die tomorrow, at least my kids have got something. Like now, Alhamdulillah, if I drop dead tomorrow, if Allah decides to take me, my kids are good. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? My kids are absolutely good. So you lost, you lost a few friends, you said? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, quite a few. Um, over the years, lost quite a few, quite a few friends to uh, obviously certain things. I don't want to obviously go into too much, but yeah. Mm. But you realise, like the difference between me now, the old me now, is I'm ready for death any time of the day. Right, right. I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, I got it. I could get. I could die, but I'm ready for it. Um, but that's the difference. That's what makes me stronger. I've. Um, that's why I do see the thing I do in Bangladesh. That's my good deeds. Um, I'm trying to also build up a. Uh, water well for clean water for the poor people in Bangladesh. Um, I, I always say to you, like, I always say to my friends, that if you do correct, you'll get correct karma back mm. and always move, move right. Um, if you don't mind me asking, you said, you know, I know you've got a t 23 in your neck there, mm. um, if you might a year, right? Yeah. Um, is, is it something where you said you almost took your own life or? Yeah, a lot, <laughs> put it this way. I didn't want to be alive. I don't want to go too much into detail. Yeah, no, yeah, no like I said, if my parents didn't come, I wouldn't be here today. 2003, I was reborn. Right, right, right. Made me who I am now. Like, for me, I went, like, say again, I started praying. My yeah. life changed. Like, I'm a whole complete, mentally, financially, I'm in such a good place. Such a good place. Like, people were like, this year, like, there's 365 days in a year. Alhamdulillah, I'm aboard 300 of those days a year. Back in the day when I told you I'd, I'd had 300 quid in my account doing ruffles, I had nothing. Praying, oh. Allah put me in such spaces. I remember I had no motor, no car. Yeah. I've got a few motors now. <laughs> you, you, my, that, that's the sort of level, praying, praying. I'll get up, I'll get up for my fudge prayers. Yeah. I do my prayers and it helps me. Some people say, oh, religion, religion doesn't do nothing. But if it wasn't for religion, the world would be mental. Like, the world would be mental. Yeah. Um, there'll be no rules. Like for me, whatever you could believe in something, whether you're Christian, whether you're Hindu, Jewish, whatever it is, you have to have some sort of belief. There has to be some rule and guidance in life, or it just drives mental. And for me, it proved because I was moving reckless in my younger days. And look what happened to me. Like, born a Muslim, I went, my, my, my parents are always right. <laughs> All your parents are always right. Anyone listening out there, your parents are always right. Um, but I had to go through that path to get where I am today. To know, yeah. To know yeah. why I'm, now I know what religion means to me. I know what Allah's given to me. And again, like you have to have some rule. No, definitely, definitely.
I agree with you, to be honest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's from experience, guys. I've, I've lived that life. To be fair, I'd say I was more of an atheist back in the day than a Muslim. But once 2003, I started going to the mosque, started praying. Within that space, everything just changed. Don't we? We're nearly in 2024. So my whole life's changed. I would, the way I think about it now, like me now, I've got, I got a close, close knit, knit of pals. Um, probably about, I speak to about five to ten people there, max. And those people, they have helped me like with my soul financially or whatever there ain't no before i used to talk about people who used to invite me and i got for a drink no fuck that like i ain't got time people ring me for go to the gym business ideas or at like, positivity motivation that's what people ring me for back in the mm. day they ring me for oh this that like oh you coming out or let do you, you drugs or alcohol or whatever they're the people that bring you down in life when i was going to my shittest period in 2022 i was leading up to 2023 like the only thing people could say, you know, a lot of people say I see on social media, oh, my kettle's open for you or whatever, like come down anytime. Like if you're depressed, are you going to message someone on social media? Like, can I come around? It's a bit awkward, isn't it? People don't yeah, understand yeah. that. And you've got to be real. Like I said, a lot of people commit suicide deaths. Yeah. Um, people, some people say selfish, but you don't know what that, pair, pe um, that person's feeling. It's true. Like yeah. it's actually like people say, hey, so you get rid of it. But no, you don't know how hard it is. Um, so, yeah. No, it's true. It's true. What's, um, what's the kind of Asian community like in, in your mind? Or what, what do you think it's like? Asian community, see me? I feel I've changed my mind, see my parents' mindsets, everything. So my parents used to be strict, piercings, tattoos. Right, right. So they'd be like, this is this, that, haram, blah, blah. Yes, certain things haram. But I said, the old me, I didn't have none of that. Yeah, do you see how reckless I was moving? Do you see what I was doing? Like, police going to the door every time, looking for firearms. Do you know what? Police went to my mind. They had the cheek to go to my mum's house, to my dad's room, yeah, yeah. to look for a gun. Oh. Literally, they would be like, like, as if, why the fuck would I put guns in my mum's, mum and dad's house? <laughs> like, that's just stupid. Like, yeah. anyone knows, guns, drugs, why the fuck could you put it in your parents' house? It's just stupid. Um, so then as I, as I, obviously, my parents recently, they accepted it. It's not what, it's not what matters, what you look like, it's what's inside there. Yeah. And I have such a good relationship with my mum and dad now. And I changed their mindset and I had to do what I had to do. There was a period where I didn't speak to my mum and dad for a year because I got with my, one, my baby mum, one of them was white. Um, and yeah. I, didn't, I had to prove a point. I said, no, it doesn't matter what people think. You love someone, you love someone. And just, that's the way it should be. Was that, was that kind of a clash originally for, for traditional, yeah, yeah. traditional reasons? Traditional yeah. thing. But again, any yeah. tradition, it shouldn't be like that. And I feel yeah. a lot of people say... I don't know, white people are racist, yeah, white people are racist, but I find like the Asian and some of the black people, they're a lot racist. If you bring a, I don't know, a white person, there's a, it's not, I wouldn't say that mad, mad racist, yeah. but if you brought a white girl back to a traditional black or Asian family, the mother's going to question it. I see, I like, see. Wes, why don't you get a nice black girl? Why don't you get a nice Asian girl? But it shouldn't even be that question. I mean, not a lot of people, but I know I've seen my friends. I have a lot of black and Asian friends and I've seen that before. But for me, I feel I've done well in life in terms of changing my mum and dad's mindset mm. in terms of the Asian culture. See me, I, I rock up in a mosque, like whatever, I pray, whatever, I've got my tattoos. Obviously, I cover up because you can't really have certain things on and stuff. Um, and people respect me because I say, look, my religion is my, sorry, my relationship with Allah and Allah only. Like the way I see it, when I was on that bad path, not bad path, that, that night, obviously, if my mum and dad would come in it, yeah, I said, there's two choices. I said, the way, the voice I got is going to sound mad is God said to me, Allah said to me, right, if you give up all that shit, it's my skin. I gave you this skin, yeah? You do what you want to do to yourself and then you give up all the bad shit in it, yeah? Mm. And be there for your kids. No one will say anything. You do what you want to your skin. But not, uh, that's what I say to my mom. I said, that's why I do what I do. And all the pain, all the hurt, all the PTSD, I put it in my, I do what I do in it to make me happy. You put it in tattoos or? I, yeah. I just, I just see my piercing tattoos. I do what right, makes right, me right. happy. To express yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. to not even express myself. I, it makes me happy. Like I do things. I know you shouldn't. People say you shouldn't. It's haram. It is, it is haram. Mm. But at the end of the day, my relationship with Allah, you know what I'm saying? I pray. I go, I go mosque. I move correct. I don't do any manners. I got, my kids are my inspiration. My family is my life. I'm yeah, not, I was gonna ask you. Yeah, what what inspires you in life? Yeah, definitely. My children. Yeah. My children. I stopped probably all my half all my madness in 2014 when my first born Aaliyah. She was my first born. Um, with her, she made me a father. Um, and then I had my second daughter Yasmin in 2017. Um, she showed me how to be a father. <laughs> mm. um, and then I got my son Zane. He um, he literally he's he's the reason I keep going. 
Oh. These children are keep going. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, I get a lot of people, you see the old people try to bring you back in this life. Like, I'm not interested in that. I'm happy. I'm happy with what I am. I'm happy with my children. I'm happy with my family. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I think, <laughs> I think we're wrapping up. I've got the last few questions. Go on. Um, do you believe in any conspiracy theories? Conspiracy? Yeah. Well, do you know what? The world's fucked. Do you know? <laughs> I, I, I do what I do. A lot, see, a lot of shit I don't agree with. Nowadays, I see I was like my kid's school. Um, they say you can be identified as whatever gender. What the fuck is that about? See me, I, if you're gay, you're gay. I don't care. But that, mm. see, nowadays, I, I think like, do it somewhere else. Don't bring it on my children. And all this stuff with the government, like, for example, all this COVID stuff. Yeah, it's probably real. COVID's real, real, it's a whole different thing. But then you realise on the news, I see this guy, Boris, was lying. This person's not got injections and people are dying. What do you think of that? There's something funny going on. But yeah. you will never, ever win against the government. You will, that's one thing I read. You'll never, ever win. You've got to do your thing, lay low and focus on your family. Mm. So, yeah. Now, fair enough. Um, have you heard of the flat earth theory? No, <laughs> see, see, see what it sits for me. Yeah. The flat earth, flat for me. Like, what goes in? Like, Allah created this world. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Like, I'm not going to question anything unless anything's going to affect my family, my life. I don't. What goes in? Well, the main thing at the moment is Palestine and that. I hear that because yeah. I see. It, do you know what? It hurts me inside. I see innocent children dying and stuff. And for me, I've got children and it literally hurts me. If I had the chance, do you know what? I was Googling up <laughs> the other day. Can I get to Palestine? Can I get that? Because I will. You Did give you me. Go? A, I would go. You Seriously? give me. You give me a couple of shooters. I'll. I'll take my own, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'll take my own. I'll take my own, bro. I'm. Bro, I will die. I will die. Do you know what I'm saying? Wallahi, I will fucking die. These kids. Do you know what I'm saying? They've done. done. I've seen baby children. It's fucking horrible. I googled it up, but then I think you got to be humanitarian. Sorry, where how you say yeah. aid, the uh, aid worker and stuff. I've. I've. I've, I've looked. I'll go there. Literally. What's your dead serious? Yeah. I'm there. I just kids. Who, who would you fight for Palestine, right? 100 percent that's me it's asking you it's like innocent people dying one thing in my life like children and women and stuff that you just got to leave them do you know what i'm saying well what are your thoughts on the on the war the, at the moment yeah well it's fucking children and women are dying in it it's homicide isn't it from genocide sorry genocide um just sorry just to clarify from which side to which side who's, who's a well the israelis people are yeah. killing the palestine aren't they right i've not seen any other people dead on that side all i'm seeing is children dying I've seen children petrified, losing their mums. Like, you're bombing hospitals, you're building, bombing children's schools. Like, that's the only thing I see. I don't see anything I've seen, yeah. So it, it is horrible shit. Something needs to be done. The worst part of it is the world's just sitting and watching. What happened to Ukraine when mm. Russia was going? I don't, I don't even know what's, if it's still going on or not. No, no, they, everyone, they've stopped. All, these, all these, you yeah. know what, all, the, all these posts, all these countries trying to help, sending all these aids, everything was a big, big, big thing. But now it's yeah. Palestine, it's a Muslim country, it's a whole different story. So yeah, That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, every, everyone's going quiet. But then, like I said, I hope you've got all these Muslim countries. Like, as a unit, you've got your, you've got your Turkey. Like, they're, they're big. There's a big, massive country. There's a lot of Saudi Arabia. Big, they're big in the game. Oil. All these, you'll see the Middle East. Oil, oil, oil. If you mm. stop all of that in these things, someone will do something. But this yeah. is what I'm saying. There's a conspiracy thing. There's something going on we don't know. Why ain't Turkey coming forward? Why ain't Saudi Arabia coming forward? Why ain't all these Middle East coming forward? Because Islam is the fastest going religion and a lot of these countries are Muslim. So why isn't anyone getting involved? So you've got to ask yourself this. There's, some, there's something going on we don't know about. Mm.